Well before Walt Disney developed plans for his idea of the perfect city, which became Epcot, a Kentucky man began to develop his own idea for an idyllic community, one in which everyone was treated with neighborly kindness and traditional American values were at the forefront. This is the place that today is known as Renfro Valley, the place where time stands still. John Lair was born in Renfro Valley in 1894. At the time, the area was remote and sparsely populated by settlers who fell in love with the peaceful valley and its resources. Lair was educated in the one-room Redbud Schoolhouse, which still sits in the valley today. As an adult, Lair saw the value in traditional mountain entertainment and moved to Chicago to start a broadcasting career at WLS. It was here that he created the weekly WLS Barn Dance Show, a live theater broadcast that became immensely popular. Entertainment for the show was provided by musicians from his home back in Kentucky. This is where Lair's big dream began. If the demand for tickets for his live show was this high, why wouldn't people travel to Kentucky to see the real deal? In 1937, Lair moved his radio show to WLW in Cincinnati, where its popularity continued to grow. It was from here that he began to lay the groundwork for Renfro Valley as an entertainment venue and clearinghouse for mountain music. While his show continued to be broadcast from Cincinnati, shovels were turning the dirt in Rockcastle County to build the original barn, now called the Old Barn, a lodge, cabins, and a restaurant. The first official Renfro Valley Barn Dance to be broadcast from its namesake home occurred on November 4, 1939. WHAS in Louisville took over the responsibility of the broadcast, which had expanded to include hay rides, possum hunts, and others, as listeners were transported to the valley through these shows. The valley's popularity continued to grow through the 1940s and 1950s. Some broadcasts were eventually picked up by CBS Broadcasting, expanding the valley's reach to nearly all corners of the country. New shows, including the Country Store program that was broadcast from what is now the Country Music Store, were developed. The Valley also began to be featured in television specials. Howdy folks, before we go over to the big barn, I think I ought to tell you something about Renfro Valley. It's not merely a figment of the imagination, just a name dreamed up for a radio program. Renfro Valley is a real honest-to-goodness place down here in the hill country. I was in an attempt to preserve the way of life in this low green valley that I grew up in, to turn down a page of history in the making set back the clock 50 or 100 years and make this the valley where time stands still. It was often said that people from up north far outnumbered Kentuckians in the audience of the live shows. WRVK radio station broadcasting from the area to this day was launched in 1957. Several pioneers of early popular bluegrass and country music began their careers in the valley. These include Martha Carson, Red Foley, Clay Ager, and Lily Mae Ledford and the Coon Creek Girls. That slick Appalachian breed of comedy has always been a big draw as well. Ojo Clark, Betty Lou York, and Ben Wilson have been particular favorites over the years. I got here early today and I was walk walking around and I went up a little street I had never been up before. And I got up there and it was the prettiest little church you ever seen. But it was beautiful, but the thing that really caught my eye was a little sign out front, his glass over it, had a light in it so you could see it at night. It was something. It had up there in big print who the preacher were, what time Sunday school were, what time church service, and prayer meeting, and everything. And down at the bottom in little smaller letters, it had those that are through with sin, come on in. And down underneath that, wrote in lipstick, on the outside of the glass, it said, them that ain't, call 645-8473. I spent the rest of the afternoon on the telephone. The line is busy. In 1970, the highly acclaimed and heavily attended Renfro Valley Bluegrass Festival was launched by bluegrass artist Mac Wiseman, and Lair hosted monthly street dances in front of Boone Tavern in Berea. 
Valley's Harvest Festival began in the 1980s. As the World's Fair opened in Knoxville, Tennessee in 1984, Renfro Valley shows were featured prominently to visitors. In 1985, a troupe of Valley performers put on a show for the Kentucky Legislature as a way to encourage them to officially name it Kentucky's Country Music Capital. Lair died that same year at the age of 91. The family, having decided they were unable to manage the valley, sold it to a group of businessmen from Lexington. They invested heavily in the valley, adding the new barn auditorium and completely rebuilding the village area. Big name country acts were added to the shows and the valley enjoyed a renewed surge in popularity. 1993 saw the addition of the popular Christmas in the Valley show, which still continues. One of the biggest changes to happen here occurred in 2000 when the entire valley was given over to the board of directors of the Kentucky Music Hall of Fame and Museum. It built its permanent home here in 2002 in John Lair's former horse stables. This arrangement was short-lived, however, as the valley was sold to Don and Vera Evans in 2005. Avid fans of the valley, the couple had attended more than 1,200 shows. They expanded the shows and added a full hookup RV campground. Upon their passing, their daughter and son-in-law took the reins in 2010 and are continuing to make improvements to a place many, many know and love.